Hello everyone. Here we are at the second week of our Life of Christ course and I hope that you have gotten a feel for the kinds of things you'll be learning and gotten into a rhythm of when to do the forum discussions and the assignments. In our last session I gave you an overview of the course, what the course was and what it was not. And this week what I want to do is give a summary of a little bit of last week and then what to look for in this coming week. And that will be the outline or the way that I'll proceed in these instructor videos in the future. You looked at some foundational terms and I know that definitions assignment is rather tedious, but it's important to understand the terms that that uh, you'll be looking at or using in the, in the course. And it's something that will help you get a feel for the kinds of things we'll be talking about. You looked a little bit at the synoptic problem and I want to clarify because some people think of a problem as some sort of conflict or confrontation or um, something along that line. But the synoptic problem is more like a puzzle to solve. And the puzzle has to do with the fact that the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, contains so much information that is very, very similar, almost word for word, and yet at the same time, there are pieces that are very distinct and different, uh, even in the, within the same story. So scholars want to know, okay, so why is that? Where did uh, these authors get their material? So the synoptic problem is trying to resolve or figure out that puzzle of why there are some differences in some of the, the same stories and why some of them are just exactly the same. Another thing you looked at was the, the Q source. And Q is uh, the name given to an unknown source for material that is unique to Matthew and Luke. Both of them contain all of the material of Mark, but each one of them has material that is found only in their gospel. Uh, and so Q is the name of the source. This is not a source that we actually have. However, it's not a make-believe source, but it's obviously some place where these two authors got their material and it's not known to, um, to us. You looked at the historical critical method, especially form criticism, where you're identifying the forms of the gospel, this goes to our literary genres type of exercise that you're going to be doing this week. And redaction criticism, understanding the purpose the writer had in mind. Now, when we use the word criticism, remember, it's not in the sense that we normally use the word criticizing somebody, uh, pointing out flaws. Criticism here simply means analytical, uh, analyzing the forms, analyzing the uh, how, uh, what the purpose of each writer is. So criticism, not in the negative sense, but in a positive sense of analyzing and, and reviewing the uh, sources. This week, you will see the video, Jesus and History. Uh, and I want you to watch for what the uh, speaker says about the existence of Jesus and the trustworthiness of the manuscripts. Some of you had some real difficulty believing that the oral tradition could uh, uh, could maintain integrity over time. And partly the reason we're skeptical about that is because we live in a society that does not uh, base its identity on traditions that are passed down orally. We live in a literate society. We live in a society where our attention and our memories are very short term. And we have no concept of how ancient societies uh, maintain the integrity of stories. Uh, one of the examples was elders who uh, made sure that the stories were passed down as they ought to be. Uh, archaeologists uh, and anthropologists have clearly shown that uh, primitive societies maintained the integrity of stories passed down um, through the centuries. It's hard for us to understand, partly because of our modern arrogance and believing that 
Uh, we are the only ones who have a, a corner on uh, truth. And so um, consider that carefully. The, um, the next thing that we want to take a look at is the historical, religious, social, and cultural setting, setting of the Gospels. We have to remember that the Gospels are written in a time that we are not familiar with, in a place that men, most of us, if not all of us, have never been, and in a culture that is very different than ours. Jesus was a Jew living in Palestine under the Roman, uh, the Roman government. Those are the things that we need to try to put in context as we try to understand the Gospels. I want you to pay attention to, towards the end of the chapter, what the author says about honor and shame, family and kinship, hospitality and social status. These are especially important when we come to the parables of Jesus, honor and shame, especially uh, when we talk, when Jesus starts uh, teaching about so many things. And hospitality is extremely important in Middle Eastern culture, even to this day. You have a document uh, that is entitled Literary Genres. I want you to read that carefully and refer to pages 56 to 57. Uh, as you uh, are reading the Gospels, keep this in mind. This is part of your assignment for this coming week. And uh, these docu the, the document and the, uh, uh, the pages in the chapter are very important and will help you with that. If you need any help, do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, and send me an email and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And I hope that you will enjoy your study this week. And I will be with you again next week. Until then, have fun.